You know, sin is a weight. It's very heavy. And Jesus is the only one that can lift that weight from us. You see, God has a purpose for everybody's life here today. He's sovereign. He's all-powerful. He's all-present. He's all-knowing. And when you begin to look at the foreknowledge of God and his election, predestination, and you study them, people, I think, sometimes get a little distorted. But I do believe that God is sovereign. Amen. He is all-knowing, but my destiny is the destiny of my choice. It's my choice. God didn't create me to go to heaven or hell. He made me a free moral agent, and he makes it possible while you're alive here on the face of this earth, he's going to come to you. He's going to give you probably a lot more than one opportunity to accept him, and at that time, it's up to you to make that personal decision yourself. I'm glad God does not preordain things like some people teach because if I felt like God had preordained me before the foundation of the world to go to hell, I could never see him as a loving God because that would be a terrible, terrible injustice. But I do want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, second chapter, one through seven, I want to make a reference to this past Wednesday night service. Brother Rick uh, spoke for us this past Wednesday night, and this was his text. I told him after the service was over, uh, that uh, sermon that he preached, uh, I know it was uh, not considered a sermon as saying that Ricky is a preacher, but he is a lay speaker. And that sermon, and I'm not going to get involved in it, uh, but it moved me on the inside in ways that brought back a lot of memories, like Johnny remembering some things. Well, this past Wednesday night, it put me in a mode of remembering. And you know what happens to you on occasions. You get on with life, and then God opens the curtains again, lets you look back and see how merciful he really has been to you. And I believe every one of us, that happens to us on occasions. I know we're not going to walk around thinking about that all the time, but I think it's good to be reminded of who we are and who he is. He is our Savior, and we absolutely uh, know that he is the one that brought us to where we're at today if you're a Christian. Begin reading Ephesians, second chapter, verse 1 through 7. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also... We all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to wards us through Jesus Christ. And again, the very beginning of the text and you, talking to each one of us, you has he quickened together who were dead in your trespasses and your sins. In other words, he came to you. He gave you an opportunity to accept him, and you accepted him. And if you had age on you, you were probably already involved in things that you shouldn't have been involved in, walking after the flesh. You see, the Bible said if we don't walk in the Spirit, we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Bible warns us and says to us, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, people that don't know God, they can't really sow to the Spirit because they have to be born again. They have to come to the Lord. They have to receive Him as their personal Savior. But you and I that have been saved, we have been born again. We have an opportunity now to make choices. We're no longer under bondage of sin. We no longer, Johnny, have that weight on us of condemnation because now as Christians we receive conviction, reproof, not condemnation. Everybody that's born into this world, you come into this world under condemnation. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I want to insert something in this message right now. I don't know what's happening in this world today, and it's been a long time since God has just dealt with me about almost like being an evangelist preaching to the lost people. It's just on me. And I, I look and scan this congregation, and I don't know uh, if there's a lost person here in this service today. I really don't know. There might not be one lost person here today, but even if I am preaching to Christians, we need to be reminded of the sovereignty of God and where he brought us from. You see, Ricky shared, I will share a little bit of what you said, Ricky. Ricky shared with us, he just retired from Clay Electorate. He put in 38 years there, recognized as a supervisor. I forget your title, and I know it's not important, but Ricky was a supervisor for many years. So that was his identity with the people that he worked with. Uh, and he made a statement that I thought was so in-depth. I, I know it's just surface, but the Spirit of God took it deep down into my spirit, <clears throat> and he brought a little humor into it. He said, since I've retired, I don't know if you worded it just like this, but he said, I have an identity problem. I'm trying to identify myself. I'm having to revisit, realize that there's a big change that has just taken place in my life. In other words, he's in new territory. He's out of his comfort zone. And as I speak to this congregation this morning, you don't have to be an employee with Clay Electric 38 years and retire and be out of your comfort zone. There's time God causes things and allows things to happen in your life that you can also be dealing with an identity problem. You can be a you can be dealing with an identity problem, but the sovereignty of God is so in depth. It's so in depth. And I have some scriptures uh, concerning uh, the mysteries of God. And, and you know, sometimes God works in mysterious ways. He works in ways that you and I cannot understand. He declares this in the things that he has put in his word. Now, we see in Jeremiah, before he was even born, before Jeremiah was even born, he was known as a weeping prophet. And in Jeremiah 1 and 5, God spoke and said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Now, that is strange. Uh, there's no one, I don't care how deep they are in theology, I, I don't care if they know Greek, I don't care if they know he Hebrew, if they can quote the Webster Dictionary, when you get into these supernatural things, you just have to read them, accept them, and believe them by faith. Now, see, when I read that, I believe that. How about you? I believe that. I believe God let Jeremiah know that before he was even formed, that God had predestined him. 
Now, that is something, again, that I don't quite understand, but I do know that many are called and few are chosen, and I'm not even sure if this uh, interpretation that I'm giving you is a proper interpretation, but I really feel like Jeremiah, and you can start naming other prophets and other people that God has called. Uh, I, I want to tell you something. They are preordained, but that is with foreknowledge. And we don't have time to get into that, but you today are just as important. This is when I get in this area that it's beyond me. And, and I believe it. I believe it in my heart. You're just as important to God as Jeremiah was to God. You are. Now, I can't get a hold of that, but when God lets me feel it and I believe it, and I'm not trying to be humble, but I know when God saved me, I was a nobody. And I don't feel like anybody now, but then again, I do feel like somebody. Because God is my Father, Jesus Christ is my elder brother, and heaven is my home. And I plan on going there and living with him throughout eternity. I know you can put yourself right where I'm at right now, all over this building. You're, you're sitting there, you're hearing me, but you know the feeling that I have. You know what I'm talking about. None of us deserve what we have here today, church. Somebody said, well, Gene, I'm not having too good of a life. Well, uh, we're talking about Memorial Day. A lot of people, it do them good to be able to go to third world countries and, and see. I know we can see it sitting in our living room. I understand that. But when you're in a truck and you're in a supply unit and you're going through a village that their, 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 their septic tank is nothing but a trench in an old uh, hut that's going out into a rice paddy, uh, be careful what you eat. You never know what's in it. And I won't go any further than that. And you, and you go through and children, some of them are naked. Some of them have on a little strip. And if it's in the summertime, flies. And, and they're just, it, it's, it's unreal. We're blessed. We're spoiled here in America, church. We're spoiled here in America. But, but Jeremiah, I don't want to get too far away from the point that I'm trying to bring out is that uh, God had a purpose for you being here. You're not here by mistake. God had a purpose for you. And in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 9 through 10, he said, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there's none else. I am God, and there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. Do you know if you believe that scripture that I just read? You don't need a lot of scriptures backing that up. You don't need a lot of scriptures propping that up. The people that are Christians that are suffering from anxiety because of recent th things that are happening here in our wonderful country, they're walking around stressed. Many people are walking around with fear. I, I just want to tell you in a simple way, and, and it, it's nothing. It's so elementary. It's a little kid understands this. And, but when we believe this, it brings a peace in our soul. It, it keeps us from, from being over-anxious. I just want to make this statement. God is in total control. There is nothing out of control. God is in control of the situations, not only here in America, but across this world. God is in control. He raised up Jeremiah to speak to the nations. And I've already mentioned it. This country here is not by chance. Our Constitution is not by chance. Those men that sacrificed for this country, that's not by chance. God allowed this. God formed this country. And I'm not sure, and I don't want to say anything here today that would depress anybody or to make anybody feel bad, but you need to get into prophecy and understand one day there is going to be a one world government. There's going to be a one world religion. That is what's happening today. 
this global concept that we have, the United Nations and, and all that we know about. And, and, and when I was in school, they, they taught communism versus Americanism versus communism. And, and a lot of our students, well-educated children, and I call them children. When you're 25, you're a child of me. And if you don't believe it, take your thumb and put it behind your ear. You're still wet. You just don't know it. I used to resent that kind of stuff coming from old people like I am right now. But, but let me tell you something. Truth is not relevant. It's not. There is absolute truth. They have taught them in our colleges, evolution, the Big Bang Theory, on and on and on. But it's daresome to mention the Bible. It's daresome to mention Christ. But here's where you and I are going to have to have a backbone in this last day. We're going to have to stand up and realize God has put his hand on us. He's invested in us. He's got a big investment in you. He's taking you through these trials. He's taking you through the heat of the day. And some of them, you were just like me. I was a lousy failure. You hear me? You were too, if you don't believe it. Well, maybe you hadn't lived long enough yet, but if you've lived long enough, you failed more than one time. But God always is there to pick you up. He's not picking you up and dusting you off just for your own good. God sees something in you he wants to use. He wants it to manifest through you. You see, somebody said, not me, Gene. No, not me. I Don't ever get to the place and say, I can't. You can if God ordains you to do it. There are people that have God has put his hands on. He's brought them up in ways that are unreal. Uh, somebody mentioned the other night or the other afternoon, sometimes. Anyway, I can't remember the evangelist's name, but Brother Dave, I think, was his first name. This, this man really had some handicaps. He, he couldn't hardly talk. Who? David Rehm. And I heard him preach on more than one occasion. When he'd talk, he couldn't hardly get his words out. And you'd sit back there feeling guilty. It's like D.L. Moody said one time when he was at a crusade and, and his education was lacking somewhat and he was preaching to some prominent people that were well-educated and one of those people came out of the crowd and went to him and said, Brother Moody, uh, due to the fact you get exposed to so many people, don't you think you ought to go back and, and, and study English? He said, ma'am, he said, I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. What are you doing with what you have? You see, we're not to measure ourselves by each other. God's got something special for every person here. You need to believe what I'm saying now. You know, you get motivation speakers. They want to pump you up, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. Somebody can make you feel better. But we need preachers to preach the Word. You see, you cannot lift yourself up by your bootstrings. I don't care what they say to you. You can make yourself feel temporarily good. You can use psychology, the power of positive thinking. But I want to tell you what you better get into is the power of positive faith in the Word of God. Because the Word of God will take you to a man named Jesus Christ. He's the deity. The Word of God will take you there through troubles, through heartaches, through failures. God will meet you at the worst moment of your life and he'll bring you out of darkness uh, and he'll place you into a marvelous light. It'll be a supernatural light. It's supernatural. You can't explain it. You change and you didn't do it. You became a new creation. It wasn't your willpower. It wasn't your ability. It wasn't your know-how. It was a God in heaven that made this plan of salvation what it is. He looked down on mankind, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I believe they had a conference in heaven. 
And I believe they come up with the idea that Jesus was to come to the earth and be a kinsman redeemer. He had to be fully man. He couldn't be part man. He was Emmanuel. He was God with us. He came to this earth through a little maiden woman named Mary. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a perfect life. He was crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and this very moment is sitting at the right side of the Father, making intercession for everybody in this place this morning. God has a will for your life. God's invested in you. I said, I'm limited in my abilities. God's not limited in anything. He can make a rooster crow at the light, right time and make a donkey talk and tell one of his apostles, just go down and catch a fish. Don't worry about the taxes. Just open that fish's mouth and take tax out and pay them. If he says to us, when a spira falls to the ground, I take note of it. When he said, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Yes, we know that God is sovereign. In Psalms 139 verses 1 through 6, I love this psalm. O Lord, Thou hast searched me. He's searching you here today. Thou knowest my down sitting. He knows when you get up in the morning. Yes, he does. He knows my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. That's not just your good ways. He's acquainted with those bad ways. That's why he tells us and he instructs us. Why would you try to hide from God? Why wouldn't you come as you are? Listen, I've heard too many people say, when I get things right, you know, when I get things straightened out, you're walking backwards. Come like you are. Come with your sins. Though your sins be as scarlet, Come, God said, and let us counsel together. I'll make those sins as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, I'll make them as white as wool. He said, I'll take those deep sins that you've committed along with those light sins that other people's committed. Takes the same blood for the forgiveness. There's no good and bad sinners. You're lost, you're lost, you're lost, you're lost. You come into this world lost. I want to just repeat it. You're lost, you're lost. But when Jesus comes into your life, you're not lost anymore. You're saved. Somebody said, what did he save you from? He saved you from your willful sinfulness. That was in your nature. And he imputed a new nature to you that will override that old nature. And when the Adam comes up in you and said, why don't you just give up? Why don't you go back to drinking? Why don't you go back to crowds and around? Why don't you go back to that? Say, the reason I won't go back is because I have a God in heaven that said it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, uh, the comforter will not come. I have a comforter with me right now. I have the Holy Ghost with me. When I get weak, I realize that now I can be strong because in my weakness, his strength is what? It's made perfect. I want to tell you something. I mean, God put this in my mind. Some of the downfalls that's all over this world today, Christian people get in church, they get offended, they get their feelings hurt, they hold bitterness against people, and they think they can still go to God and not love their brother. I want to tell you something. If you cannot love your brother who you can see, I don't care how bad he's done you. I don't care how bad she's done you. I don't care how bad that boss man was to you on the job. You have no right to give up on God. God hadn't done anything to you. Why would you not keep doing the things you ought to be doing for God? Why would you let a human being come between you and your Lord and Savior? And when you forgive them their sins, God said, then I'll open up heaven to you again and I'll pour out my blessings afresh on you again. But you've got to forgive them from your heart. Amen. 
Ooh, I'm preaching freedom preaching now. I'm preaching deliverance preaching right now. This will pick you up out of the miry clay. Somebody said, well, I'm a born-again Christian. So was the prodigal son as far as the truth that was being tr transmitted to us through this parable. You see, he was at the father's house, but something happened there. He didn't like the rules. I don't know. Dad may have to wear him out. He said, you're not whipping me anymore, Dad. We don't know. We just fill in the blanks ourselves. But he said, I'm tired of living here, Dad. I want you to give me my inheritance. He didn't have to do that. The Jewish people, that dad didn't have to give up that. That didn't come to that younger son until the dad died, but that's what kind of father he had. He said, all right, son, I'll let you have your way. Go ahead. Take your inheritance. He went on down the road, got into righteous living, wasted everything that he had and all them so-called friends that he thought he had. I want to tell you something. When he run out of money, they were nowhere around. He found himself, there's some people find themselves in a hog pen. They find, and you need to find yourself in a hog pen. And when he came to himself, the Bible said he arose from where he was at. He went back to the father's house. And when he got there, the father ran and met him. Him. And, and that young boy laid his head upon his dad's shoulder and he said, Father, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. He says, Son, why? He, it don't say this. It's G man. He says, Son, don't be talking to me like that. Don't be talking to me like that. You're my son. Kill the fatty calf. Put a robe on him. Put a ring on his hand. Put shoes on his feet. You were dead, son, but you come to yourself. You're my son. And that elder brother. He didn't even know who he was. He was jealous of his younger brother. You know what I think happened to that young, that older brother? I think he was envying his young brother. That's my interpretation. Because one of the things he said, he said, down there wasting all that money on them harlots. Huh? They didn't have smartphones back then. They didn't have Facebook. You couldn't text anybody. He didn't know what his younger brother was doing. And he wouldn't even call him his brother. It was his father's son. He wouldn't even go in. I want to call it a revival. He wouldn't even go into the revival. He said, Dad, you've never even given me a goat, much less a fatty calf. He said, Son, you don't even know who you are. Don't you know, according to this parable in the Jewish uh, the way the Jewish people work, son, don't you know if you, you son, you're not too smart. You got to put your thinking cap on. You don't like your younger brother. I can tell you don't like him. Well, don't you know that I'm getting old and I'm going to die pretty soon? He's done wasted his inheritance. See, when you go back and sin like that, some people don't think you lose anything you do. Did you hear what I said? He lost his inheritance. He spent it. So he didn't come back fully instated. He did as far as his salvation, as far as his father was concerned. But that that he wouldn't wait on, it was gone. He said, let, let, me, give this, let me give this elder brother a little bit of counsel. I got him sitting here in front of me and said, listen, son, I'm going to be the dad for a minute. Listen, son, use your smarts. I know you don't like your younger brother, and I don't have it about a couple of years here, maybe five or six years. I think I must be thinking of myself when I say that. And I said, you don't have much longer here. And don't you know when you die, everything I got belonged to you and that house we got him living over and you can kick him out. Once, once, once I'm gone, this all going to belong to you. You see, there's people come to church. They stay in church all their life and they don't even know who they are. They let envy come in. They let bitterness come in. They let unforgiveness come in when they're sitting on a treasure. You and I are sitting on a treasure. Uh, we're going to give up this treasure. I'm not, I don't want to give up my treasure. Somebody said, Gene, you really, you really think about all the gifts God's going to give you just as sure as I'm standing here behind this pulpit. I'm excited. But am I, am I serving God because I need fire insurance? No. Am I serving God because I want the five loaves and two fish? No, I can say that clearly. <laughs> If I didn't get anything, I'm not serving God for anything other. He saw me when I was in my sin. He saw me when I had no hope. Nobody else could help me. Same way with you. Same way. Nobody else could help you. And he reached down 
and he picked me up. Forget me. Picked you up. He forgave you. Let's don't let things cause us to lose what God intends for us to have. Church, I know I've got a lot more scripture, but I, I feel like I'm delivering my soul. I feel like I'm getting to the end of what God wanted to, me to share with you today. This is a wonderful weekend that we can have. But if you really want to have a good weekend, if you'll set kind of a, you have to sometimes pin yourself in to do what you need to do. I'm not asking you to make any vows. But if, you, if your heart's all tangled up with various things that you know you need to come to an altar and pray and just say, Father, forgive me through Jesus Christ, your Son and my Savior. Forgive me, Lord, of that bitterness. Don't let that spirit say, oh, they done you real bad. I think they treated Jesus pretty bad. Don't you? All the disciples left him. They did. I know Peter and, and, and John, they, they went on to his trial. I, under, I understand that, but that was Peter's downfall because that's where he denied the Lord three times. He wouldn't even own up to knowing him. That's when he had that time and set with that rooster. Jesus had already told him, he said, for Peter told him he'd go die with him. He said, Peter, before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, I, I'll never deny you. I'll die for you, but I'll never deny you. Well, in that process of time, when that rooster crowed that third time, Jesus looked at him, and he went out and wept bitterly. What did Jesus do? He forgave him. Judas was not predestined. That position was there. I know he was the son of perdition, but he had a chance, but he didn't take it. And God had foreknowledge. He didn't force him, but he had foreknowledge. Listen, don't let the devil do what he does best. He come to steal, to kill, and to destroy don't you ever believe that he's not walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I can stand here, and I want you to stand with me in your mind. I'm going to stand here and reflect on a man named Job. When God was bragging on Job, have you considered my servant Job? And I want your thoughts to end in this message with this. There's a protection, there's a shield around you. Now listen, there's a shield around you. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, all you give him and everything, but if you'll take that shield away, if you'll take that protection away, I'll call him to curse you to your face. Well, that didn't happen. I'm not going through that whole story. I'm sure you know it real well. But the angels, I believe this. I'm not just preaching this church. I believe what I'm telling you. The angels are in camp around about them that love the Lord. Somebody said, Gee, do you really believe you have a guardian angel? Just as sure as I'm standing here. Just as sure as I'm standing here behind this pulpit. Glenn? You know that what's happening with your brother right now is out of the normal. And you've stated it over here in the fellowship hall. I'm so proud when you it stated it so emphatically. Lynn said, I believe the Lord has already sent angels there around my brother. He didn't put it in those words. I agree with that. But if I didn't know the Bible, I'd look at that. I'd think about it. I wouldn't know. But where you have a precedent in the Bible where something happened, latch a hold of it. Because God has no respect for a person. I know the Lord has given me this message to give to you today. No doubt in my mind. Nowhere. Nowhere in my mind. It wasn't by chance you're here today on this Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> you know, we've had a pretty good spring this year, don't you think? Well, the old timers used to say it's time for a spring cleaning. And the old houses they used to have, they didn't have carpet on the floor, didn't have this hardwood material, wood, and they just have old cypress and whatever they had. But 
them, them real good wives that kept a good clean house. They get them old scrub brush and that old lye soap. You ever been in one of them old houses? Lies, they smell so good. They they scrub them floors till they'd be white. They'd just be white. And you'd have a little round throw rug, you know, there. It's time God's church had a spring cleaning. It's time we need to get away from counseling about our sins and get forgiveness of our sins. Would you stand?